Even in early access, Hades 2 is a great roguelike, or roguelike, or godlike, whatever you want to call it. For those slightly confused, these subgenres originated from the 1980 dungeon crawler, Rogue. Now this is where it's at. <laughs> that game introduced a combination of mechanics that would eventually be used as the core of roguelikes we see today. Games like Binding of Isaac, Risk of Rain 2, and Baldi's Basics. No, I'm serious, it is. Now there has been some debate over the true definition, hence the branching subgenres, but at the end of the day, these labels are just a way to find games that are similar to each other. Essentially, the most common elements you would see in a roguelike are procedurally generated levels, the flexibility to complete those levels in multiple ways, and permadeath. Which means your character completely resets all the way back to the start of the game. However, in Hades, it also adds the stipulation that every run isn't exactly for nothing. Yes, you still have to start back from the beginning, but you do accumulate some permanent upgrades and items for future runs going forward. One of those upgrades actually allows you to defy death altogether, giving you an extra life. And even if you lose it, there's a good chance you can get it back. Unless you spend all of your coins before the boss fight. However, death isn't the end as after every run, the characters in the main hub give unique dialogue that correspond to what you just experienced. Which, after having a really bad run, can rub some salt in the wound. Another failed attempt. About ready to give in. Nuh uh. But don't worry, at least you get to pet Frenos the Frog. Hello. Alright, now that I've given some context, let's get into what Hades 2 is all about. If you couldn't tell from the title of the game already, this takes place in good old Greek mythology. And no, not the bad kind, the slightly suggestive kind. You play as Melon, no way, yeah, yeah. a witch whose main mission boils down to three words. Death to Kronos. Let's just say we had some family troubles. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So now we have to reach the god of time at the bottom of the underworld and figure out how to stop him. You see, because time. And along the way, many of our companions like to show themselves in when no one asked. Better go. Excuse me? Did she just... Again? No, you don't. <laughs> the reason I mention the characters is they have a direct tie-in to how some of your runs can play out. Just like the first game, Hades 2 uses our connections to many Greek gods to give us a leg up while traversing through the underworld. Unfortunately, they don't give us a free ride to Mount Olympus, but they do provide boons that power up our weapons and abilities. And by gifting one of them some sweet, sweet nectar, we receive a keepsake that we can carry along for extra bonuses. However, before any of that, it's good to know which weapon you'd like to bring with you. You could try the close range blades that can be a bit too quick to keep up with, or perhaps the long ranged umbral flames with a special that kinda just spins a little bit, or how about the default medium range staff that, well, I actually don't have much to say about this one. But my personal favorite has to be the axe. Granted, it's very slow, leaving you open to attacks, but man, does it hit like a truck. Oh my gosh. I will say that despite there being some incentives to try different weapons each run, I really only like two of them. Maybe they're just not my style, but it feels like they could use some balancing. <laughs> Speaking of balance, every boon I mentioned earlier now has an element attached to it. Have enough of these and you could use infusions, more powerful boons that often act as good combos. And in general, having builds with good combos can often make a run that much easier. Woo! However, this won't happen every run. In fact, you'll get runs where you pick a chaos boon that stunlocks you after taking damage, forcing you to watch your character slowly get obliterated. Oh no. No! This is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is real bad. This is all to say that Hades 2 involves a lot of RNG. The boons, the items, the paths, even the attack patterns of bosses. Oh, that's new. These all change each and every run. Once you get up to a certain point, not even the next encounter is guaranteed but that unpredictability is what makes this game so replayable. Normally, you'd think the bosses would be the cause of most of your deaths, and you'd be right. However, the lesser enemies can be just as deadly if you're not careful. A lot of your playtime will be spent trying and failing runs, but that's kind of the point. Like I mentioned before, even after you lose, there's still a whole bunch of other stuff for you to do in the crossroads. Because Malinaway is a witch, we're able to use a cauldron with some diabolical incantations. In order to brew them into existence though, you need to collect resources found randomly on the battlefield using various tools. A mining. After that, you can trade with the shades, bathe with the sundere, had an erection. garden with the bardens, I don't know, I couldn't think of a rhyme for that one. Adding these activities just livens up the place and gives you something to do outside of endlessly fighting, similar to how you could decorate your crib in the first one. And since I'm comparing the two games, I wanted to quickly shout out the artwork by Gen Z. No, really, that's her actual name. As you've seen throughout the video, the gods all have redesigns ranging from very minor to... Okay, that's not even the same character. 
but the art style, specifically for the character models in the overworld, or should I say underworld, fits perfectly. There's some other stuff I haven't mentioned, but to find all of that, I'd highly recommend playing it for yourself. Going into this game, I had super high expectations because the original Hades was one of my favorite games of the past few years. I'm only about 12 hours into Hades 2, and I still feel like I've barely scratched the surface. Literally. I've been pleasantly surprised that it's just more of the first game with what seems like more content, and it isn't even fully released yet. That being said, it does need some fine tuning and quality of life changes to truly live up to its predecessor. It'll be a while till that 1.0 release, so it's only a matter of time. Thanks for watching. Also, thank you all so much for getting this channel to a thousand subs. That's it. Bye.